Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now, for most of the 20th century and into the 21st, the United States automotive industry has been dominated by three companies, Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors. And for much of this period, General Motors has been the biggest of them. The founders of Ford and Chrysler are well known for the most part, but the man that created General Motors has been, unfortunately, largely forgotten to the American driving public. So. Let's shed some light on the man that changed how Americans buy cars, Billy Durant. William Crapo Durant, yes, that's his real name, was, through no fault of his own, born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1861. His family had money, and young Billy had all the opportunities to get a solid education. Yet he chose not to dropping out of school to learn how to make money instead. He began his career in his grandfather's lumberyard as both a salesman and office worker, learning how a business operates from the inside. After a couple of years at Grandpa's business, he left Boston and went to Flint, Michigan to be, for a short time, a cigar salesman. But Billy wanted his own company of some kind, and in 1886, partnered with a friend of his, uh, Josiah Dort, to found his own firm, the Flint Road Cart Company. Dort would make carts and carriages, while Durant would ensure that people bought them. Both of these men were successful, and within a few years their efforts made them the largest manufacturer of horse-drawn vehicles in the United States. Billy was charismatic, intelligent, and a natural kingmaker. He knew how to put the right people in the right place. He was also quite the visionary, seeing a future that, at the time, was only found in books by the likes of H.G. Wells. Yet he would prove to be a catalyst for his own vision. He saw that cars would be the future of travel and sought to get involved in their manufacture as quickly as possible, and this opportunity came about in 1904. He used his capital to purchase the then floundering Buick Motor Car Company and placed in charge the man of his choice, James Whiting. With Whiting ensuring production was steady and Durant promoting the sales and distribution of their product, Buick reached number one in U.S. car sales by 1908. Billy decided to dive even further into car business by creating a holding company in the same year to buy whatever brands of American cars that he could. And that company was... General Motors. Billy began to buy other car manufacturers with wild abandon. He purchased Oldsmobile, Oakland, which would later become Pontiac, Cadillac, and others. He also wanted to have companies that made parts for cars and founded or purchased Delco, AC, Fisher, and a whole lot more. By 1910, General Motors was a force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, the bank did the reckoning as Durant had simply overspent. He was bought out of his own company. Undaunted, he turned to another innovator, Louis Chevrolet, and in 1911 formed the Chevrolet Motor Company. Under his direction and Louis's engineering, he rebuilt his fortune and by 1916 regained control of General Motors, adding, of course, Chevrolet to their offerings. By this time, he was the man in American automotive world. Yes, that is what he was called, both by the press and his associates and employees. Yet this was in a good way. He was an excellent manager and judge of character. He cared for his workers, and the early union strikes of pre-war one factories did not plague his companies. He pioneered the manufacturing process known as vertical integration. This is where most or all of the components needed to make a product are owned by one company. Thus, the entire process of manufacture can be done in-house. And of course, there's selling cars. Borrowing from Winton's idea of the car dealership, he expanded the concept to create the world's first franchise auto dealership network. 
Training these dealerships would be handled by Durant personally and, more importantly, how to sell a brand and thus the cars. This is still used in marketing today, promoting the brand first and the product second to create brand loyalty. This was Durant's brainchild in the car world. Indeed, by 1917, Billy was the leader of the largest sales force anywhere in the world, before or since. Durant was also quite the lobbyist to get things rolling in the U.S. His vision of the future of cars in America was clear. He was interviewed in the early 1910s about the future of his companies, and his reply was stunning. Quote, most of us will live to see this whole country covered with a network of motor highways built from point to point as the bird flies, the hills cut down, the dales bridged over, the obstacles removed. Highway intersections will be built over or under the through lanes, and the present dangers of motor travel, one after another, will be eliminated." End quote. Unfortunately, Billy Durant again lost control of General Motors in 1920, never to regain it again. He did for a little while continue in the automotive industry, but the Great Depression ended his car career. He mentored many of the greats of the American automotive industry. Charles Mott, Charles Kettering, Louis Chevrolet, David Buick, Walter Chrysler, and many others. His business practices, both in manufacturing and in sales, are still in use today. And if you go to a classic car event and see the fans of General Motors cars throwing rocks at the Ford and Mopar guys, know that Billy Durant is the man that gave the GM guys their ammunition. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.